Welcome to the Leicester Pelvic Floor Service Conservative Management Clinic. This video is designed to help you understand and manage dyssynergic defecation or anismus. This is a subset of constipation. It is a type of obstructive defecation syndrome. This means that although the poo may be getting round the bowel okay, you have difficulties getting it out. This can cause the feeling of straining or the sense you haven't emptied properly. This is due to the muscles not coordinating properly. Normally, when we go for a poo, the muscles of the pelvic floor and the ring of muscles of the anus or back passage have to lengthen and relax to let the poo out. The tummy muscles also have to lengthen and work effectively to push the poo out. With dyssynergia, it may be that the muscles are squeezing instead of relaxing or shortening instead of lengthening. This can be like trying to squeeze a tube of toothpaste while keeping the lid on. These diagrams show you where the pelvic floor muscles are. There is a picture of the male pelvis on the left and the female pelvis on the right. The red part are the pelvic floor muscles. These act like a sling or harness in the pelvis, providing lift and support to the pelvic organs and helping with control over the bladder and bowel. We also need these muscles to lengthen to allow us to poo effectively. These are the sphincters or ring muscles to the anus. There is an inner or internal sphincter and an outer or external sphincter. When we need to poo, the inner sphincter relaxes as a reflex, so it is out of our conscious control. The outer sphincter we do have voluntary control over, but we also need this to relax to allow to let the poo out. Sometimes this outer sphincter can be squeezing instead of relaxing, which blocks the poo again like keeping the lid on the toothpaste. These pictures show you where the muscles are in relation to the rectum and the impact it has on the position of the rectum when we are trying to poo. The middle picture shows you in the normal sitting position. You can see the sling of the muscles around the rectum providing this angle or support which normally helps with continence. But when we want to poo we want that muscle to lengthen and pay out to allow the rectum to straighten and this makes it easier to poo. It is shown in the bottom picture. This can be achieved by going into a more squat position, as shown in these pictures. We often use an analogy of a two-way gait action to explain the role of the pelvic floor when we poo. When the muscles are at rest, they are normally like a closed gait. When we squeeze and pull the muscles up, it's like the gait opening one way, so it moves inwards and forwards. But when we want to poo, the gate has to open in the opposite direction. It has to move downwards and help the passage of the poo. If the gate is going in the wrong direction or just not opening, this creates that barrier. And again, like the lid on the toothpaste analogy. Here it shows the muscles when squeezing and pushing the poo back up. It is useful when you're trying to hold off from trying to go to the toilet. But if this is happening when you're trying to empty, then it's not effective and causes this dyssynergia or incoordination. There are various ways to help to manage this. One is adopting a more squatting position on the toilet as shown previously. Another is to improve the consistency of the poo. We can do pelvic floor relaxation exercises, as sometimes these muscles are overworking. We can look at a technique called the brace and pump, which looks at our breathing and what our tummy muscles are doing to reduce straining. We will sometimes also use various biofeedback techniques to help you learn the brace and pump and pelvic floor relaxation. Here is the Bristol stool chart. This shows you a variety of consistencies of poo. Normally we are aiming for a type 4 poo that looks like a soft smooth sausage and is easy then to pass out. With pelvic floor relaxation we can look at various techniques to help with this. One is belly breathing, learning how to use the diaphragm. Also general relaxation can be helpful as can body and mind interaction techniques such as yoga, qigong and tai chi. You may use various visualisation or imagery techniques to help with pelvic floor relaxation. And if needed, Botox injections can be used if the above methods have failed. Diaphragmatic or belly breathing. The diaphragm is the main breathing muscle that sits underneath our lungs. 
When we breathe in, the diaphragm descends or flattens, which helps us to breathe in. Our diaphragm and pelvic floor muscles coordinate together, working a bit like a piston. So when the diaphragm moves down as we breathe in, the pelvic floor muscles also move down or descend. When we breathe out, the diaphragm lifts and usually the pelvic floor will lift along with this too. We can use this idea of the belly breathing to help with the relaxation of the pelvic floor. To learn this, you can rest a hand on your upper tummy. And when you breathe in, imagine that you are inflating a balloon under your hand. So the tummy moves outwards slightly and the chest should stay relatively still. You can also use general relaxation techniques such as meditation and mindfulness. One example is to use the Headspace app, where there is a variety of videos on meditation and mindfulness that you can use. Yoga and Tai Chi help to integrate the mind and body. They also work a lot with belly breathing, which can help with pelvic floor relaxation and awareness. As we cannot see the pelvic floor, we often use a range of imagery techniques to help you get more of an awareness and an understanding of the muscles. If you can imagine, when you breathe in, the balloon inflating, but also descending down through the tummy, out into the pelvis. Imagine it descending down through the bony pelvis as you breathe in. The pelvic floor at rest looks like a bowl. Imagine, as you breathe in, that balloon descending down to rest into the bowl. Don't try to push it down. The pelvic floor muscles also attach to our seat bones, the bony bits that we sit on in our bottom. You could imagine the seat bones softening or imagining them widening in the pelvis. Imagine there is elastic between the seat bones which widens out. All of the pelvic floor attached to the tailbone or the coccyx. You could imagine a softening and dropping down. If the muscles are squeezing and tightening, it would be like pulling a tail between your legs. Imagining it softening and dropping in the opposite direction. If you have difficulty with pelvic floor relaxation, sometimes Botox injections are used. This is done under anaesthetic to explore the pelvic floor and the rectum. It can be used to reset pelvic floor tone if it is high and we cannot achieve this using our first line management. It only has temporary effect, therefore it is important to continue with first line management after Botox injections. The brace and pump technique can help reduce straining on the toilet. It can help with the relaxation of the pelvic floor as you lengthen the tummy muscles. With the pelvic floor, we are trying to open the gate and get the lengthening and paying out of the pelvic floor. Imagine a closed gate first of all, and initially try to lift it up to take it in one direction. Imagine you were going up a floor and then drop it back down to where you started. You should feel that lift up and then drop back down again. This time though, try to keep going down. So take the gate in the opposite direction. Try to lengthen down to reach the basement and then try to see if you can take that lift down to the cellar. This should take you to that position where you have the straightening of the rectum with the paying out of the pelvic floor muscles. Along with this, you also want the sphincter, the ring muscles of the anus, to open and not to squeeze. Imagine the anus as a flower or rose and imagine that flower opening out to help these muscles relax. Alongside the pelvic floor muscles, we also want the tummy muscles to lengthen and create a pump to provide the propulsive force to empty the bowel. When you breathe in, imagine that balloon inflating. Try to widen the tummy in a forwards and sideways direction as you breathe in. This is like a barrel inflating. When you breathe out, try to keep the tummy in that outwards barrel position. Try not to pull it in or to squeeze the poo out, as this can often cause the muscles to squeeze and pull up, again, putting the lid on the toothpaste. You can try various techniques when breathing out to help the pelvic floor to relax and to keep the tummy out. One is to say a shh as you breathe out, keeping the tummy in that outwards and relaxed position. Another is to use the moo to poo method. The mmm of the moo can help with the widening of the waist. The oo of the moo helps the tummy to move into a forwards position. So put these together and you have mmm, oo. 
again keeping that widening and forwards position of the tummy. As you use these techniques on the breath out, you may feel a little bit of pressure in the rectum. You then want to keep the muscles relaxed on the cellar while you take another breath in, and then repeat your sh or m mm oo techniques to help this with a further push. Try not to push down into the back passage, but rather pushing outwards into the tummy, and try not to think about squeezing the poo out. You may repeat this pattern about four to five times, then take a rest, and if needed, repeat for up to 10 minutes on the toilet. If you're having difficulty with these techniques, we may use biofeedback to help you. This helps to give you some visual, auditory and sensory cues to help to guide you and learn the techniques. This is a picture of the maple that we use in clinic, but we also have other devices. These use graphs and pictures to show you when the muscles are working and when the muscles are relaxing. We may use a rectal catheter which is a balloon on the end of a catheter inserted into the anus and rectum. This can help to provide a false poo to practice the techniques to give you more sensation of what you're working on. We sometimes use it to test the sensation in the rectum. This shows irrigation systems which are sometimes used alongside biofeedback if you are struggling. This is a water-based system which helps to flush the poo out and improve the emptying of the bowel. This video is designed to use alongside your one-to-one -one treatment or as an introduction to biofeedback. If you have any questions, please contact us on the above number.